Joining me now is a man who will take on Kabir Bath, first ever sort of grappling competition at Battlefield Fight League 43, Matt Kwan. How's it going, man? Good, how are you? I can't complain. It's it's interesting to talk to someone who's going to be grappling at a competition for Battlefield rather than a fighter that's fighting on it. What, what is your sort of perspective on the whole thing, being that this is the first ever grappling event to be put on at an MMA event? I think it's a really awesome opportunity, obviously, for uh, jiu-jitsu fighters to, you know, showcase their skills and uh, showcase how different jiu-jitsu is when it's such a high level of grappling compared to grappling in an MMA match. And of course, you know, the rules change things, but uh, you're gonna see you're gonna see a lot of cool stuff that you might not normally see on the ground uh, in an MMA match, and the fact that it's in a cage is pretty cool. So I think that's a really great thing that uh, BFL is doing. When you found out about it, what was your mindset like? Were you instantly like, "Hell yeah, this is something I want to do"? Because I know you're very active on the local competition scene. You've even traveled throughout Canada to compete. Is this something that you were like, "Holy crap, this is pretty cool"? Oh yeah, not not even a doubt in my mind. I, I immediately agreed to a match, and uh, yeah, I'm just super stoked to do it, and I can't wait to get in there on the seventh. When the name came out, you you I'm sure there were some other names that you had in your mind. Kabir Bath, he's a great competitor locally. He's he's competed in the IBJJF tournaments as well. Brown belt under Rafael Lovato Jr. What are your thoughts on Kabir as a competitor, and, and what did you think when you heard his name as the guy that you were going to be up against? Um, I've trained with Kabir, you know, many times, and I have a lot of respect for Kabir. Uh, I like him a lot. I've gone to many open mats at his school, trained with him and his guys, competed against his guys, uh, never competed against him in particular, and I really respect him as a competitor, you know. Uh, he's definitely a guy, win, lose, or draw, he'll always be ready for the next tournament. He'll fight anyone. So big, big up to Kabir for sure for taking this match against me. Although I think, you know, he's more of a gi guy as far as I know. Uh, lately, no gi has been a big focus for me. And I've really been enjoying developing my no gi game. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've been pretty active recently, whereas I know, I, I'm not even sure when the last time he's competed was. But, um, uh, you know, as far as a competitor, I have all the respect in the world for Kabir. Has training changed at all for this kind of a, an event? I mean, the, the rule set is a little different than most out there. Uh, what's training been like, and has it differed from, say, your CBJJF tournaments? No, I mean, um, I work full-time, so training is basically happening whenever I'm not at work, right? That's my main obligation, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, it makes it hard to train full-time or even feel that you're 100% prepared. So for guys like me that can only get to the gym maybe once a day, uh, usually it's a longer session and it could mean, you know, you have to train smarter to make up for lost time. You have to study and just constantly think about training while you're you know, when I'm at work, I'm just thinking about training and thinking about new techniques and cool, cool stuff. That's all I'm thinking about. So you have to find pockets of time. Uh, as far as my preparation, it hasn't really changed at all. I, I train every day, uh, some days harder than others because I'm, a, I'm all natural. I don't believe in like a lot of supp supplements and definitely no steroids or anything like that. So I have to let my body rest. Sometimes training three times a day isn't uh, the smartest thing you can do for your body. <laughs> for sure. Now, uh, you said, you know, it's a submission-only format, but rolling submissions. What, what were your thoughts on this when you found that out? And, and I mean, it could be two different favors because guys could stall and look for a submission later in the in the fight because submissions are worth more as the fight goes on. Right. Uh, you're a guy who's gung-ho. You guys, you go for the submissions are you going to be looking for multiple submissions over the course of this uh, eight-minute fight? Sorry, my cats are fighting over there. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, to me, the, I'll just be going for submissions until the clock runs out. You know, that's that's how I roll in the gym. That's how I roll when I compete. Um, 
I do play the points as well at times when I have to, but uh, it's definitely not my preferred objective when I'm grappling. I like to go for submissions and I definitely like to experiment spare the moment. So if it happens in front of a crowd, you know, in a cage, that's even more cool for me. And uh, yeah, as for me, I'm going to be going for submissions the whole time. And I hope he is too. He, you know, I hope he's going for attacking me from all angles. Now, this is the first of its kind, as we said, for Battlefield Fight League. What, what can mixed martial arts fans out there expect to see when you enter that cage? And just let them know where they can find you, maybe in social media. Also, um, if they're local guys that would like to train with you, where they can find you in the Lower Mainland area. Yeah, so uh, I just opened a school last August with uh, Professor Mike Lee called On Guard uh, Academy of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It's in Port Coquitlam, and uh, we're a young club. Uh, we're expanding, building a team right now of, of really great guys. And, uh, you know, with the level of instruction that we're giving there, they progressed really quickly. So, um, just the teaching methods and, and rolling with guys like me every day and Mike Lee. So, you know, we're the white belts that we were a few months ago beating on are now sort of putting up a bit of a fight. And, and we got a lot of experienced guys, too, uh, that have come from other clubs that have now really, you know, they're helping us build this program in Port Coquitlam. Um, and, yeah, when, when – uh, what was the first question? What can when, fans expect out of you when you enter the cage on the 7th? Well, basically, every time that I step on uh, to compete, I look to put on a show. Uh, I, I like to express myself with a lot of cool different various submissions of a very submission-oriented game. I'm not the kind of guy who is going to just stall uh, hold someone in my guard or just try and pin them down. Uh, if I'm not passing, I'll be attacking the legs and vice versa. You know, uh, if, if he, I don't really care if Kabir wants to wrestle with me, I'm confident on my feet. Um, if he wants to pull guard, I'm confident on top, you know, and I, I don't know. I don't see him taking me down to be honest. And can fans keep up with you in the social media game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm at BJJ Matt K on Instagram and uh, my Facebook page, Matt Kwan. Um, yeah, hit me up. <laughs> Twitter as well, uh, BJJ Matt K. And I just want to say thanks to my sponsors, BC Kimonos and BJJ Depot. And of course, my friend Addy Nokiani uh, at Simply Wellness Dental makes some awesome mouth guards. So thank you to all you guys. Matt, good luck on the seventh, buddy. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So here is the other half of that fight between Matt Kwan and Kabir Bath. He is Kabir Bath, brown belt under Hafiel Lovato Jr. Thanks for joining me, man. Man, it's my pleasure to be here. Super pumped about this fight. It's going to be awesome. It's pretty cool to see grappling up on a big stage like that right now. Sort of what I, what I wanted to get right into. I mean, you've been on the scene for quite some time. You, I mean... Back with Gracie Baja, you you went in there as a as a kid that didn't really know what he was getting himself into. Now you own your own club. Did you ever think that you were going to be competing in a grappling event in front of an MMA crowd? Man, never thought that was going to happen for sure. I mean, when I started jiu-jitsu, I really even thought I was going to do it. I remember the warm-up like smoked me. I was like, man, I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> But then I just started competing in, like, 2006, and, like, I've done, like, some super fights, but it's, like, been in front of, like, a wrestling crowd or at a jiu-jitsu tournament, for example. But in front of an MMA crowd, you know, in a cage with all the other, you know, song and dance that goes on, you know, walkout songs, weigh-ins, all that fun stuff, makes it a really cool experience. I'm really excited. I think you can do a lot uh, for the sport in our area. Is it is that what got you pumped to sort of get right into it? I mean, the fact that it could build... Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and BC to a whole new level? Dude, absolutely. Um, just like when I was contacted about it and I heard about this, I'm like, man, it's the perfect way to just start sneaking it in there and just start showing like the pure grappling side of things. And Battlefield has a pretty cool format they're doing, you know, trying to really force us to go for multiple finishes throughout the match rather than just grinding it out, you know, like you might see at some other tournaments. But yeah, I think it's going to do wonders. Like, I just know, like, for me, 
at my school, I have like tons of people who I don't think would have ever went to say a jujitsu tournament just to watch or like me fight or like Dion fight, for example. But this is just like perk them right up. Like they're into it. I think, yeah. And I think not only the fact that it's going to perk your guys up into it, but it's going to bring a new crowd to the MMA scene as well. I mean, it, it, it's going to turn both sides of the table. Like, we're going to get the MMA crowd possibly into jiu-jitsu, which is super cool because you might see new people come into your club. And on the swing of things, we might get the Brazilian jiu-jitsu crowd into MMA. Man, it would just be so mutually beneficial for the community. I mean, you'll probably see the most jiu-jitsu guys out at this event ever. You know, like, I'm pretty sure at the Battlefield it's going to be the the crowd is going to be full of, like, jujitsu schools. Yep. And that's going to change that whole dynamic. And I think it's just going to be so good because, man, I'm sure a lot of these guys are coming just for the grappling. They might hop in and watch the next battlefield. And then same way, those guys who just came for the fights, they might have that interest peaked and go check and see what's happening locally as far as grappling goes for them. Exactly. So I'm excited. Great Super. exposure for everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. Super cool. Now, you spoke about Dion there. He's also on the card. He's competing against Clint Cooper, who's an absolute beast. How is it? Um, both of I mean, it's got to be awesome that two guys from the same club are training together for this this event. I mean, it, all these other guys don't have two guys from one club. You know what I mean? Like they're they're all over the place. You guys are within the same community, so you guys are grinding at the same thing. It's got to be pretty cool. And it, and. It's cool just to stage with your student. And it sort of makes me think of like when my professor Lovato was talking about the time that him and Justin Rader went out and they first had like their big event together they got to train for. And it's just so cool to be able to go out like he was telling me that was like ADCC that he was talking about. I mean like locally this is pretty high profile, you know, same rules pretty much, you know. It's fun and it's been so great just for us to get on that grind and just embrace it. Like, I wish like I could have more of my guys on it just because I know it's going to be so good for them. Like, I have some other studs that I know will, they'll be on the next one, you know? But it's just great to bring, like, a whole different energy to our training for sure. I bet. Now, the, with training, because it is a different rule set, as you said, you know, they're they're looking for the rolling submissions, and it goes, as the time goes, the, the points go. It, is, has that changed up your training at all in terms of the way you're going to approach this matchup? Uh, you know, not really. I usually am always trying to get the submission for the most part. And truthfully, for me, no gi is way better for me as far as catching submissions. Like, I find the gi, I usually have to play, you know, more conservative. Not conservative, but it's just the nature of the gi. You know, it's a different pace. But no gi, I love, you know, those scrambles, hitting those submissions in transition, sort of playing that game. Plus, it's so great, you know, all the leg locks are open now. Yeah, You know, not just the straight foot lock, not the toe hold, not the knee bar. But now we have, like, the heel hooks in there, you know, the slicers. Everything is in there. And I think it's because the rules are so wide open that it's going to allow us to play a very exciting match for that full eight minutes. And, yeah, I think Battlefield did a really good job with that because we'll have a lot of fun with that. Just hanging out suspense till the very end because, you know, like a late submission could offset anything that happened earlier in the match. Which is crazy. I mean, you, you'd think it would be the other way around, but with it being that way, you can't really... I mean, you could stall until the end, but that you're you're looking for trouble if you do that. Yeah, because, I mean, you're trying to stall it out. Even if you got some early taps on a dude, it doesn't matter if it was, like, before, like, the fourth minute, because those are, like, one and two points. Yeah, exactly. And that's going to be fun, I think. That's actually a big part that'll help the crowd be really engaged in this match too. For sure. Now, for the crowd, I mean, you said it, you think it'll be mostly jujitsu clubs. Um, for the MMA guys out there that might not know you, what can they expect when Kabir Bath heads into that cage? Man, uh, I'm I'm always bringing it. You know, I've been. That's always been my thing. I've always been ready to compete on the drop of a dime. You know, I'm I'm always in there. So I'm going to be trying to push the positions, try and get in there, top, bottom. I'm comfortable everywhere, you know what I mean? I know Matt is comfortable everywhere, too. So when we get in there, it'll be great because it'll be a dynamic fight for the guys. You won't see us just, like, holding on in any position. We're going to hunt, hunt, hunt. And that's my thing. But, like, for me personally, my style is always pressure, smash, you know, work my way into those positions. 
I'm going to grind it, but it's not going to be like the slow grind just to get the next position. I'm going to grind to open up the submission attempts, to play the transitions that they have to give me as a result of the pressure. That's just like something that I've learned from Lovato. You know, that's his style. Carries right down to me. I want to hunt it the same way. Now, just let people know, you know, where they can keep up with you in the social media game. Also, if you have any sponsors you'd like to give shout outs to, or, or you know, you're obviously Lovato, whatnot, just the floor is yours, man. Man, I mean, if you guys want to follow me on social media, all my social media is just Kaboom BJJ, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. Search me, find me, connect there. Of course, the first person I have to thank is obviously the community making this happen because it's going to be great. They're supporting this. I just know it's going to be awesome for the future. But, man, of course, my professor Lovato, all those super studs that I get to train with, you know, all year. And then my sponsors, you know, BJJ Depot. I was one of their first sort of sponsored athletes. They've been holding me down the whole time, whether I'm, you know, on the mats every tournament or it's my students out there. They've been wonderful. And then, of course, you know, my brother's always been supporting me with 24-hour collision out in Vancouver with my competition career, too. So I got to show love right there. You know, those guys have been helping me out. It just, it's so cool having, like, my whole school behind me. My kids' parents, my kids are stoked. My adults, man, my kickboxing students, I don't know nothing about jiu-jitsu. They're stoked, you know, and I just <laughs> feed off all that love. Isn't it cool, you know? Like, I'm sure everyone has had great love flowing their way just because it's an event. Everyone's stoked. It's just cool to see a bunch of us getting our time to shine with a, a lot of eyes on us, you know? Let people know where they can find your club. Man, my club's out in uh, Surrey, right on the Surrey Delta border off of Scott Road and 86th Avenue. If you guys ever want to come in, train, happy to have you there, man. Good luck on the 7th, Kabir. Man, thank you so much for your time, Jeremy. Really appreciate it.